I'm glad to see you again because I've been waiting for you all, all week. Um, the, the, the fish you got me last week, you know, one, one, one feed of that, that's it for another week. So, what sort of fish have you got today for me? Uh, same stuff as I had last week. Oh, it's right, been, right, been right. Last week. Well, has it? <laughs> well, it looks pretty good. The salmon looks lovely. And the, uh, what, what's the other fish you have there? Salmon, cod, place, you know, the, yeah. the end of the red spots. Yeah, yeah. Uh, trout. Yeah. Uh, hake, some haddock, oh, very nice. prawn meat, and sea bass. Sea bass, I love sea bass. Tommy, what's your own favourite fish? Probably herring when they're in season. Herring? Uh, and why is that? Just love the taste of them. They're so oily and natural. They're natural oil to cook at, and it really tastes something that you could never replicate on any other way. Is that right? Uh, uh, and they only a certain time of the year then? I we always knew that it used to be we fished them for longer when I was younger, but now they're they're quoted, so maybe mm. eight weeks mm. at the most mm. or so. Tommy, uh, being a fisherman and stuff um, like that, uh, the Bible talks a lot about fishing and the sea and all that. There, right, right throughout the Bible, even the Old Testament talks a lot about the sea. Um, have you any connections with the Bible and, and, and the sea? Do you, do you um, have any favourite stories about the sea or fishing or anything like that? Well, I often ask myself the question why the Lord chose predominantly fishermen to be his disciples. Why, why would you do that? They were, uh, you know, the, the Jewish leaders, after the Lord went back to heaven, recognised that they were unlearned fishermen. And yet they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. But I often I ask myself the question why, and as I look back on my fishing life, I feel that fishermen especially know what it is to, and to use Peter's term in John 19, we have toiled all night and taken nothing. And that would be morally and practically good for people who go out to preach the gospel, labor hard on the tide, as it were, and nobody see very little for their their their, their labour. Now, P Peter, of course, when he shot the gospel net in Acts chapter two, there was all them souls saved in the day the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came. But there'd be days of persecution. He wrote about it later. Days of opposition, and fishermen are men who are used to that. So that makes me think, perhaps, you know. And then then the, the, there's the abundance of the seas in the Bible. You know, the, 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 the sea reminds us of oh, uh, a multitude of variety. It reminds us of the handiwork of God in that way. And out of that, out of that variety, God can bring that which is for his glory. Do you remember, remember I'm selling, sending Peter to, to go and take the starter out of the fish's mouth? Yeah. Uh, what grace and Christ part, go and pay that for me and for thee. Uh, great links with the sea. Away from Genesis 1, as you say, until the time when there will be no more sea. And what about Jonah? A lot of people would, 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 don't believe in that story. It could uh, never happen. Do you believe in the story of Jonah? I do, yes. I do. Well, tell me a wee bit about Jonah and that fish. Or... Well, J Jonah was sent by God to Nineveh to offer repentance to the Gentiles. Jonah, a uh, nationalistic Jew, no time for the Gentiles. Then they want the Gentiles to be forgiven or blessed. So he struggled against God's message. As the Bible says, uh, went down to Tarsus, imagine, uh, uh, to, to, to get a boat to, to escape from the presence of the Lord. God followed him, uh, eventually brought the, the terrible turmoil upon the sea. Uh, I often think of the question of the mariners to Jonah, what shall we do unto thee that the sea may be calm unto us? Another thing you can learn is there's a turbulent storm going outside. Jonah's sleeping. Jonah has lost contact with his God. He's out of touch with everybody now, so he has. And eventually the men toss him into the sea. The sea becomes calm. The great fish swallows Jonah. Jonah learns something. Oh, the... Have you any idea what, 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 what type of fish that was? No. Does anybody know? No, no, no. no I don't know. I, People I, I, talk about whales and stuff. No, but whales don't only swallow things as big as that. I, I'm really sure they only eat plankton. Yeah. So it must have been something different than that. You know? yeah. And Tommy, another, um, I, I love maybe, personally I love the stories about um, whenever the disciples were in the boat, a great storm yeah. came. You've been in storms yourself. Can you remember? Can you remember any really bad storms that you were in when you fished yourself, the trawlers? Yes, but no, no, no. 
quite bad weather and scary weather, but no, no is the disciples fun it in Mark chapter four. Um, not, not really as bad as that. Yeah. But, you know, I, I remember I used to go down to your house. You had, a, I think it was your, I don't know whether it was your cousin or who it was, but I think his name was Sean. He, he, he fished he's with my brother-in-law. Your brother-in-law. That was that Sean. And tell me a wee bit about Sean. Sean was brought up in England, uh, was brought up in the Catholic faith, so he knew about the Lord Jesus, knew about God, knew about heaven and hell and sin, knew about his need of salvation. Uh, come over here, uh, sorry, before he came over here, uh, his stepfather uh, had been a Christian, married his mother, his real father died, married his mother, and and. Sean's stepfather brought the, the, the true gospel, the true story of salvation alone through Christ into that family. And his mother, devout Catholic, got saved. One or two of the other family members got saved and eventually my brother-in-law Sean got saved before he came over here. He came to work for a man in Limavati called Marshall Howe, a fruit and vegetable dealer. He met my sister, they eventually got married. Sean decided to come and live in Porto Vogue and came to work with us in the boat. And sadly, he lost his life in a storm. Man, that, 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 that was all. I remember that time. That Aye. was awful. He, did, did he fall overboard or what? He was washed overboard. Washed overboard. Uh, Were you on that boat with him? I wasn't there that day. Oh, right. So I wasn't. I was preserved for being there that day because I couldn't swim either. Yeah. Now, him, him and the other fellow that were drowned were both swimmers, but and the fellow that couldn't swim was was still, was yeah. saved under yeah. the water. And eventually, has went on to serve the Lord in the Presbyterian Church yeah. at the moment. Yeah, so good. Okay, Tommy, just thank you for that that wee chat. Now, getting back to the fish, I think I'll have some sea bass. But I believe there's a special offer on the sea bass I, I, today. I want to say this before you get your sea bass. Think of the think of the storm, and the end of Mark chapter four. Think of the question: Lord, carest thou not that we perish? That's yeah. what they said. He was asleep. Imagine, imagine he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep, but he was asleep in the helmsman's pillow, quite mm. happily and content, knowing he was in God's will, the storm mm. coming. He awoke and he rebuked the wind and the sea. He spoke to them, rebuked them. Mm. And I love the words of the, uh, the disciples from the authorised version of the Bible. There was a great calm, it said, there became a great calm. What manner of man is this that even the wind and the waves obey him? That'll yeah, that is lovely. Um, what, what, what manner of man is this? Yeah. You know, and if, if people don't know yeah. him as their saviour, they should. I have to say, I feel a real calm on my own heart. Now, I'm not a very calm person outside of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm running around. But um, yeah, there's a great calm. It's hard to believe that the Lord Jesus actually slept. Yes, but he was in his shared total and perfect humanity without sin. He was a perfect human being. Yes, without sin. And he got tired, and he got thirsty, and he got hungry. Yes, he, he states all them things, isn't he? Oh, that's amazing. Jesus, being wearied with his journey, oh. sat thus on the well. Oh. Remember that? Yeah. You know, we still think of Jesus maybe as... The mighty God. The mighty God. And, so he was. Yeah. If he hadn't have been that, he never could have accomplished a redemption. Yeah. I love the words of Bishop Handley Mole, a saviour who is not quite God, is like a bridge that is broken at the farther end. But not only, no only was he the, 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 the great redemptive God, he was our kinsman redeemer. He drew near to humanity and shared humanity and died for humanity and provided redemption for the whole world. Tommy, I could listen to you all day, but I know you have a schedule. Well, to fed up listening to me. <laughs> <laughs> Is she? <laughs> well, I'm not fed up listening to you, Tommy. And, and, and as I said before, I think I go to Sea Bass. It's on special offer today. Is that right? Uh, tenor of fillet. Tenor of fillet. <laughs> well, here, I'll pay £20 a fillet. That, that's how much I appreciate you your fish. You've all heard that, folks. <laughs> <laughs> I some Sea Bass, and don't be shy. Don't be shy on the uh, portions. Tommy, do you know what I mean? Is that okay? Okay, that's brilliant. Thank you, Tommy. Tommy? Yeah? All the best, and thanks very much. No boy.